Hello everybody and welcome to another pixelforlife.com video tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at the Red Giant Trap Code Particular as well as the awesome plugin called Magic Looks by Red Giant as well. And uh, to start guys we're going to go ahead and create a new composition here. We're going to make it be 1280 by 720 black background and we're simply going to make this be uh, 8 second long. 8 seconds long here as the duration, okay? Leave everything else the way it is and hit OK. Once this uh, comes up, go ahead and just click on OK. And uh, you can see here I have us in four views. You click down here at the bottom, and I have us in four, the four views. And this one up here is going to be the active camera. But before we get into all that, let's go ahead and first of all, let's just create a camera. And we'll just call this uh, active camera, okay? And once we have that, this basically, from our top view, gives us kind of an idea of where our camera is at on the 3D axis and plane, okay? And if I zoom out here on the active camera, let's go ahead and double click this area here in, uh, once you click on project. And I have a folder called missile, um, and I've put a link to this image, uh, for these images into the, um, uh, description below. So the startling city is basically what we want to use. Now once we're here we're simply going to grab this and then place it on our canvas. All right? and You can see here it's created in a new layer. If we zoom out on our active camera you can see here it's currently bigger than our workspace and that's okay. That's what we want. So here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to um, start over here in this corner with it and if I come in over here I can line this up to where I just have a little bit of extra as you can see here, I just have a little bit of extra on both sides of this image, okay? And I've made this image this size on purpose because basically we're going to create a pan and zoom effect. Or not really so much zoom, but just panning it um, over so that we're then on this side. So it looks like we're removing the image, okay? So I'm actually going to go ahead and just click on the layer down here. Hit P for position. Click on my stopwatch, which creates a keyframe. I'm then going to go all the way over to the end of 8 seconds. And I will then move this image so that it is basically lined up the exact same way, only on the other side. Now, I'm then going to go to the four second mark. Okay. Now, from the four second mark, I'm simply going to come up here to the front, and I want to kind of swoop this like so, so that now when I hit play, if I go to single view here now, and I go ahead and I just zoom in and hit play. And you can see here we kind of zoom on the image here a little bit. All right, now I may have actually messed this up just a little bit too much. You actually need to bring this down to actually let's get rid of that. Just get rid of the keyframe entirely. And from here we'll go ahead and bring this up like so, so that uh, it is definitely still below that area. And now you can see here it just kind of is zooming over and across, all right? And I'm then going to drag this out here and drag this one out here like so. And I just want to basically kind of make these nice and smooth. And uh, let's undo that. It was already pretty smooth. I like the way that looks, okay? So that's the start of our uh, canvas here. now. The next thing I want to do is I actually want to change the way this image looks a little bit. So I'm actually going to select this layer. Go ahead and just, we'll make that small again. I'm then going to go to Effect, and I'm going to go to Magic Bullet Looks and click on Looks. Now, Magic Bullet Looks is the other Red Giant software that I was talking about. And you can see here if I hit Edit, the uh, new section will come up, and it's way too big for my screen. So hang on, let me downsize this after it loads. And here I've downsized it so that we can uh, try to get you to see everything that's in it. And basically, I'll have to continue to drag this window around. Uh, the whole top part is over here. you got your basic editing tools over here. But basically, what we want to look at is over here on the left-hand side, we have this thing called Looks. And then under here, we have some different uh, you know choices that we can choose from. And um, we can choose the one that you know suits us the best that we like. And I'm looking for a specific kind of look. Um, this one here is not too bad, uh, and that's called Romance. Uh, Neo is pretty cool, as is the Invasion. Okay, and that the Invasion kind of looks like a Michael Bay like Transformers type movie, and that's kind of the look we're going for. So I'm just going to use that. 
And once you've got it selected, you just hit finish, and you can see there then the image changes um, so that it, it looks correct. And uh, you can see there it's moving around and kind of zooming. So it looks pretty good, and we may need to go in and change that zoom later on, actually. Um, I'm actually just going to delete this keyframe in the center there, because I just decided I just want it to pan across like that. I think that looks a little bit more realistic, and I think that's going to do us good. So we now have the stage set for our work and for our canvas. So basically, now that we have that, whoa, wrong, 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 uh, now that we have that done, I need to go ahead and create uh, the missiles. Now, what we're basically going to do is we're going to have some missiles fly in here on the screen, and then you would switch over to the next scene after this. That's why it's only eight seconds long, and they would explode on something. So we're not going to be creating the explosion animation. Instead, we're only going to be creating the missiles themselves, okay, so, uh, with, the, with the trail of smoke. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in here and create new, and we're going to simply click on... Um, light okay and we're gonna name this light emitter now this light is showing up right here now if I need to go back to my four views here all right I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down so that the uh, transform position is uh, available for me and I'm simply going to drag this back in the top view so that it's behind the camera okay like so, so right here's our camera here's our point I'm then going to create a keyframe I will then move to the um, 8 second mark and I'm simply going to drag this into the canvas like so and I'm also going to drag it down up a little bit but like so and I then want to go ahead and just drag this whoops wrong one I'm then going to drag this here and simply put the path here so that it's kind of curving as you can see here into our screen but actually I want to curve it out the other way and I not only want to curve that but I also want to curve uh, not that hang on I also want to curve it like this so that it's kind of going up and then so it starts up here and it's kind of swooping down in okay and trust me, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty much exactly what we're going to want there. Now from there, we now have this emitter, and it's emitting that. We need to go ahead and go back to our one camera view here. We'll go ahead and zoom in here. And now we're going to go ahead and create some particles. So first thing we need to do from this point is right-click, go to New, create a solid, call it Particular. That's Part, I-C-U-L-A-R. Hit OK and just click on make sure make, uh, make comp size. We're then going to right click on that and go to effect, trap code, and click on particular. And you can see here that we now have a, uh, particles being emitted on our entire screen, okay? Now, <clears throat> what we need to do is go ahead and click on our emitter and we're going to change the type from point to lights so that now it's basically following our light. And you can see, you can see here that the um, particles are kind of following the direction of our light right now okay so let's go ahead and just put it right here so we can kind of see what's going on with the particles I already know we're gonna need a whole lot more particles so I'm just actually just gonna bump this up to around 800 to start for now um, we may even need more than that but just so you can definitely see kind of what's going on the velocity I'm gonna put at zero um, well actually you know what let's put that at like 15 and yeah, maybe a little bit more let's put it at uh, 35 there we go that looks pretty good and the random, leave that alone. Distribution, you can kind of you know mess with that a little bit. You can see it changes. It's not really a big deal. And this velocity from motion um, is going to make a difference, but we'll go ahead and just put that at 15. I think that'll work out pretty good. So then we're going to go ahead and close emitter, and instead we're going to go down here to particle. Now we're going to go ahead and change our size, and we're going to up the size so that we basically have a complete white area like this. Okay, and the outside edges look kind of like smoke right now, so that's good. Our lifespan, we definitely want to keep our lifespan going. So we want to go to the end of the 8 seconds. And you can see here that our smoke trail has ended. So we actually want to up this life scale until it is completely in frame. So I'm thinking about 10 probably. 
and the life random we're going to definitely go ahead and just kind of alter that all the way to 100 I'm going to put this feather at 100 and then we'll up the size a little bit more so it's like that then go back to the emitter real quick and the velocity we need to change that down so that it's about like so okay because we don't want it so thick that it you can't see what's going on all right from here we're then going to change this from sphere to cloudlet and you can see here it gets a little bit thicker so we may actually want to go ahead and just adjust that size down just a little bit so it's kind of like that okay and we may, uh, we'll probably adjust this some more anyway. Size random, we want to put that at about 50. And the opacity, we're going to put that down, we're going to put that down to about 20% for now. And we're then going to opacity random, we're definitely going to put that all the way at 100. Now the color, most people leave it at a complete white, but because of the uh, way that we use this, I'm actually going to be going into my greens colors. And I'm going to put the smoke to be a slight greenish uh, gray color not not a whole lot just a little bit now from here this does not really look like smoke does it so all we got to do is click on shading go to shadow lit for main and just turn that on and you can see there then it starts to come through the actual clouds and then we need to go back and adjust our opacity and you can see there that looks a whole lot more like clouds right there so let's go ahead and just adjust the opacity down a little bit it's not too bad there I kinda like that actually back to our emitter and then we can adjust you know how many particles we actually have on the screen at one time and that right there is looking pretty pretty good now I do need to go back to my emitter and make sure that my keyframe here is selected I'm then going to go back to my top view here alright because I actually need to just drag this out even more and then from there I'm then going to go to the um, front view and I need to drag this probably just more kinda like so so if I go back to my active camera and I can then drag this kinda like so and remember, this animation is taking eight full seconds here, so eight full seconds, and that smoke is being created. So I, I definitely want to be able to see it on the screen, but I'm not really sure I really want it that thick. So I'm actually going to go ahead and here and we'll change the velocity down to 10%, and that'll change that thickness there for us. And that looks pretty good. Now, to blow up a city, you always have more than one missile. But we're going to actually look at that in the next lesson. So for that, I'll see you all later.